All right. So what is going on, Sacktown? It's Sacktown Pete back at it again. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Today, we have a very special guest on the channel, and I want to welcome Noor. Uh, she covers the Toronto Raptors, and she's one of the uh, big names around the Toronto Raptors as far as covering the Toronto Raptors. Noor, welcome. It's an honor and pleasure to have you on the channel. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, thanks so much. For, uh, first of all, I don't know about anything about big names, nothing like that. Um, uh, yeah, for me, um, I got into the Raptors, thankfully, uh, right around when, uh, coincidentally, not, not on purpose, right when Masai took over. So okay. right at the We The North era, which was fantastic because the stories that I've heard me, you know, prior to that doesn't sound like it was a good basketball time. So I'm glad that I took over right when we had good basketball. Um, and yeah, since then just been a really, really big fan. And, uh, I, my mantra is, uh, you can be a big sports fan, but until you have a Twitter account to really talk your sports, like you're not that big of a sports fan. And I was like, now that I'm on Twitter and I'm live tweeting games, I've like solidified myself as, um, you know, obsessed, <laughs> like yeah. I need help pretty yeah. much. But yeah, since then it's a uh, pretty much just been a really, really cool ride. Um, we found it dishes and dimes together with a bunch of women from Toronto, um, awesome. that talk the Raptors and everything. And, um, and yeah, since then it's just been, um, it's been re really, really cool. That's awesome. That's great to hear because, uh, when I think of the Toronto Raptors, uh, I think about obviously the great run they have with Kawhi Leonard and that We the North era and that playoff series with the Golden State Warriors was a fun, exciting series. Um, just knowing the fact that, you know, Kevin Durant went down, uh, Clay Thompson went down <laughs> and the Toronto Raptors uh, took advantage of that. They took advantage of that. And it was a good um, sight to see the Warriors lose in the finals because me personally uh, in Northern California, we're uh, it's. It's uh, it's crazy because when the Golden State Warriors come to town and even when the Lakers come to town, uh, it's like a home game for them because uh, Sacramento, <laughs> as you know, if, if, I'm pretty sure you know, uh, we haven't been really relevant in a long, long time. But with this new front office in place, and I think that we're going to get back to where we were previously, uh, you know, trying to end the playoff drought and whatnot. So I was rooting for the Toronto Raptors. And I'm, uh, when I think of the Toronto Raptors, I think of Air Canada. I think of Vince Carter growing up, watching Vince Carter. As you know, half man, half amazing. He was fantastic for the uh, the whole uh, country of uh, Canada and the Toronto mm -hmm. Raptors itself. So growing up watching him, I'm um, always been around Toronto Raptors and familiar with the Toronto Raptors. And then Kawhi came and won the championship for the Toronto Raptors. And then he left. And now this new era of the Toronto Raptors basketball, it's kind of like more of a retool or a real build with uh, drafting Scotty Barnes and having Freddie Van Vliet and uh, Pascal Siakam. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the uh, the new era of the Toronto Raptors basketball. Can you talk about where, because my uh, my fans here in Sacramento, uh, obviously I'm sure you know about uh, Pascal Siakam's name being around in the rumor mill, but it looks like uh, the Webster, the GM now, um, has made it clear that they want to keep Siakam a part of the uh, the core in place with Van Vliet and uh, the new drafty uh, Scotty Barnes. Can you talk about, it, was there those rumors? Were they something concrete? Was that just all smoke, or do you know anything that's uh, that they tended to maybe entertain offers for Pascal Siakam? Right. So, um, as a as a Raptor fan or as someone who covers the Raptors, the one thing that you've learned right from the get go is the team does not tell you anything. They are a very tight lipped organization and they're not going to leak anything unless it's been intended to leak on their behalf um, in terms of whether that be for negotiations um, to kind of like you know, alert the market, whatever the case may be, they usually don't really say anything. Um, and we've heard Pascal's name in the trade market for quite some time now and over the over the course of the years, it's been more so, you know, other teams trying to figure out whether or not he's up for the t up for the task, whether they're offering him on the table, how much they could, you know, get him for and what, they, what would be on the line to get him on their team. Um, as of this year, though, after what he's gone through and uh, just um, not having the best the past two seasons, I I'm not inclined to believe that he has not been explored by the Raptors. Like, I do believe that, you know any team is looking to better themselves no matter what happens. So whoever is on the roster, unless it's top five players, like their odds are they're going to probably be moved around for those top five players. Right. Awesome. Um, so when it comes to that, it was kind of just like, 
well, who's really out there for Siakam for them to trade for? Um, and, you know, for the Raptors fan base, and I think just around the NBA too, if there's any discourse for Pascal, it kind of just came down to, well, like, would you trade him for now, depending on his injury and how he's gone? Or do you stay and do you wait until, you know, because for us as well, right? Like we kind of spent the last two seasons not in Canada at all. Um, they're both in the States um, and that affected not just, just the fans, the, the players itself. And they made that very, very clear throughout the two years that the two seasons that it was tough. So they're banking on the fact that if Pascal comes back, it's going to be a different, you know, setting for him, different, same environment. He's uh, kind of back to his roots and, um, and just kind of like, you know, we owe it to, to him to have a season to recover. Cause he's just going to have surgery, um, recover from that. Just, I guess, um, he might just be back in time for December, maybe a little bit later. Um, so we were just like, you know, for that, he, we, de- he deserves to have the time to recover and see how he comes through following year if Masai and Bobby decide that you know what we can get someone better back then there's no one who's going to question anything that Masai does absolutely and 100 percent. thank you for making that clear because you know at Sacramento uh we're not known for a marquee destination for top players the only way we would get top, <laughs> yeah. the only way we would get top players through if we uh, homegrown our own talent, meaning that if we were to get a star and get lucky in the draft, uh, we're hoping that De'Aaron Fox and uh, Tyrese Halliburton can be, become those ultimate stars um, and be attractive. And my thing with here, here, here in Sacramento is like, you know, we got to add a third piece to those two star, young up and coming stars. I feel like this team and this front office in place now with Monty McNair leading the way, um, he's trying to change that narrative here in Sacramento. We're like, we're not known for a big name marquee uh, destination but can become ultimately attractive via trades. And uh, that's the only way we can get a, a star other than drafting a star is through uh, the, to the trade market. And when I saw like the Sacramento Kings link to Pascal Siakam and the ongoing Ben Simmons rumors, um, I felt like, you know, with Scotty Bonds, Scotty Bonds being drafted by the Raptors, I was like, well, huh, that's very interesting because um, does that mean they want to pull the plug to Siakam? knowing the fact that he's still 27 years old and he's a an all-star caliber player and he's relatively young. Yes, um, he had that labor injury this past season. And it just was kind of confusing to me because I'm like, well, they shouldn't, do, do they want to give up on the on, on, on him so young? Because considering the fact that he's so good, he, wanted, he was a big part of the championship run that the Raptors had not too long ago with Kawhi Leonard and Van Vliet and uh, Lowry. So I just kind of wanted to, dive into that and ask and see like hey is he really available or is it just kind of yeah. just all smoke in the air or maybe just entertain the offers but I think that I think his, his manager actually sorry also came out and said that um no he's not looking to be moved and Bobby came out and said that we're not looking to move him so um i perhaps would take their word for it but if anything like it's nice to see that there are other markets that are like because you know we're so quick to just crap on someone who doesn't really perform the, the, in the playoffs but yeah. seeing other people who are like you know what if you don't want him we'll take pascal it's for like sure. all right so maybe we have a good guy back at home we shouldn't trade for sure for sure and now you mentioned about the raptors as a team being away from canada and playing um, in the states um how was that like for you and the rest of the fan base of Toronto, like not knowing that, I mean, I understand what COVID, you know, what not going through the past year and a half, just not be able to attend or even just knowing that the Raptors are in town playing the game. How was that? Was that just like such an adjustment from the fan base and for you personally, like, Oh, they're playing in the States, but they're not here in Canada. Uh, I think the, the first season when they were in the bubble, it was kind of more like, yeah, I mean, it's hard for us, but they're all in the same boat. You know, they're all in the same area. Every fan base is going through the same thing. No one's watching their team to, um, at home for, for this season. So that part was kind of just like, yes, it sucks, but like, it's not just us. But the year after when, you know, every, I think your country was more open you were able to have your teams back to their cities. And uh, we were able to see throughout the course of the season, a lot of the, um, the arenas also fill up for the respective teams. Like I'm pretty sure by like halfway through Utah was filled, like it was completely packed. Right. So, um, it was tough because you would see the Raptors play in Utah, you know, and they're playing for their fans and the fans are going crazy. And for us, we're like, well, they're in all the way in Florida. And then when they do play in Florida and their home in their home game, um, the 
op- the opposition's team's fans come in. Like, it's not even like they're in home at, at that point because their home crowd is booing them at the, at the free throw line. So mm-hmm. it was really, really tough to watch. And be- because knowing that, you know, our one of our main guys, Pascal, um, as great of a player as he is, and it doesn't diminish anything that he already does, but it's just that he he does thrive quite a bit when it comes to um, environment, right? Like what yeah. the what the audience is like, what the, how the crowd's going, like that's, that's that kind of really feeds him into everything. And I feel like that's not to downplay, obviously his own talents and stuff, but I feel like a big part of just him not being able to maintain himself was because of this, that, that lingering thing that, you know, we don't have the fans there and no one's around to, because, you know, when, it's it sounds crazy to be like well athletes care about what fans are saying but like totally. if you're in your home court and you're at the free throw line and you're about to take a shot and you're being booed by your own home crowd like I feel like that over the course of every single game does match up right because no, you're going from away to home games and everywhere like no one's really here to support you and, and it was very unfortunate because I come across seeing those games and when they're playing here in the states and I'm like you know Pascal shooting a free throw and they're booing and I'm like yeah what is is going on like that's that's not really cool and sometimes it does take a toll you know mentally in your head like hey um it's not our fault that we had to be moved here in the states and uh, to get these booze as being the home team it just definitely takes a negative uh, negative toll and um it was very unfortunate to see that but um i'm glad uh they're uh supposed to be back in toronto playing this upcoming season and uh with fan uh, fans being in attendance in sacramento Mm -hmm. we have a loyal fan base and i can only imagine um uh, what it was like the last year uh, having the team play in the bubble and then uh, play majority of the last season uh, without fans in attendance with cardboard cutouts. So I'm like, oh man, I want to get yeah. back into the stands <laughs> yeah. and definitely experience a game uh, this upcoming season. So let's take it back real quick. Uh, the infamous game winner for uh, Kawhi Leonard against the Sixers in the, West, in the Eastern Conference Finals. The, bottle, the, the, the ball itself just bounces, takes a couple of bounces and it goes in. Uh, where were you? Were you at the, league or were, you, were you like watching on TV? Like, how was that feeling knowing that that ball went in and you advanced to the, uh, the actual NBA finals? I think I was at, uh, my friend's place. We were, had all just gathered to watch the game together and no one knew what was going to happen as a Raptors fan. It was just kind of like, you know what? It's the last minute. It's, it's, it's game seven. Um, let's pack our bags, you know, like it's not going to go in our favor. I'm just going to make sure that my expectations are low from the get-go um and then I don't know he turned the corner he had Ben and Embiid on him and he let Embiid Embiid drop sorry uh, Ben dropped yeah and Embiid was still on him as he's going through and I just remember like we're all like standing up very slowly and as you see like Embiid take a I think he jumped a lot quicker than he should have so he took off way quicker than um, the release that Kawhi had going so as he was like coming down Kawhi was taking his shot and literally everybody was just like standing up kind of like no one could look anywhere else you had your eyes just etched to the screen and then yeah then you see the four bounces the infamous four bounces and it just goes right in it was it was wild and we really got to see Kawhi celebrate for the first time ever (laughs) um ever really and his excuse for that was well like I've won championships before yeah but I've never won it on a game seven winner and we're like gotcha Makes yeah sense. and it, it was, was uh it was great it was great to see that and the way it played out and um, the infamous game winner that sent uh joel and b uh crying and uh yes. back his bags <laughs> home so that was definitely like probably one of the best game sevens i've ever seen uh in my life just knowing the fact that both teams wanted it, them uh, uh going for it all and the raptors came uh, prevailed and got the, got it done and uh went on to win the nba championship so as far as winning the nba championship um we at sacramento uh we came close, so close, about more than a decade ago of getting to the NBA Finals, <laughs> yeah. but the Los Angeles losers, I mean, the Los Angeles Lakers uh, were in the way, and uh, they beat us, derailed us. How was that feeling, knowing the fact that the Raptors won, came to uh, Golden State at Oakland at the time, now they're over in San Francisco at the Chase Center, but how was that feeling, uh, knowing that they came to Golden State and won the championship on the road and crowned as champions? How was that for you faithful rap Toronto fans and your, yourself knowing that your team just won a championship. How was that feeling? It was honestly, it was surreal. Um, and for me, it was 
not to say like, you know, it was even better for me, but for me, it was, uh, it was, it was crazy because, uh, I had always been a Kawhi fan. I had been a Kawhi fan since his San Antonio days, um, since him and Tim were together. And, um, to the point where I got, I adopted a cat, I think in 2016 and I named him Kawhi oh. and, and like literally like two years later, we got Kawhi on the team and it was just through the, the craziest bunch of circumstances that he actually ended up on the team, right? Like he should not have been in Toronto and he was in Toronto for that year. And to see that happen, to see this guy play on my team who I cared about so much and, you know, I was my favorite player ever. And then to watch him take that winner and then to watch him win with our team that I really care for. It's, it was, it was crazy. It was Honestly, it was, it was, um, one of the best times ever if the city since, since then has never, has not come down from that high. I think we're going to ride that as for as long as we can. And, um, it was just, uh, it was, it was sick because, um, I mean, it was great, but then the other, the other part of it was just like, as soon as it was over, it was Kawhi's free agency. And so we were just like, you know, now what's going to happen. So we got to celebrate the championship for maybe like two weeks. And yeah. then the third week was like, okay, so where's, where's Kawhi going? What's going to yeah. happen? Yeah. And then, you know, we, the rest is history. He went to Clippers, whatever, but that's the <laughs> one thing they can never take away from us, that championship. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And to be honest, I'm super jealous because we haven't <laughs> obviously ha experienced that here in Sacramento, even though we're so <laughs> close to back then, but I'm at the same time, I'm happy to see that uh, play out because knowing that the Golden State Warriors and how they won and the five-year run they had and then Kevin Durant yeah. comes to the team and then they get beat by the Toronto Raptors. That's why I was rooting for the Toronto Raptors because I wanted to see somebody else win a championship and it would have been cool to uh, see the Raptors win because they're loyal fan base. I know they have a good loyal fan base there in Toronto as a, and as a country, they support the Raptors as well. So uh, it was definitely cool to see the Raptors win the championship uh, back then. And fast forwarding to now, uh, how do you feel about Scotty Barnes uh, being drafted so high with the Raptors uh, fourth overall pick, I believe. And mm -hmm. um, how is it, what's the talk in town about Scotty Barnes and uh, will he be starting or will he, do you think that he's going to have immediate impact right away considering the fact that he was drafted fourth overall in the 2021 draft? Right. So I think originally uh, they projected that Suggs would be going fourth. Right. And that's kind of what we had all thought about and, um, digested almost like you were just like okay I think we should be drafting slugs and as from the Raptors standpoint it kind of made sense too because if you're letting Kyle go at that point it makes sense to have someone like slugs come in and um you know lead the same thing that Kyle had started uh but yet again Masai being Masai like there was just a curveball and we have no idea what, what to expect but um the first things first, like we just trust our front office a lot. Um, and Messiah and Bobby, whatever they've done so far, we would not be here without them. And as just as you mentioned, Sacramento is not really a marquee market for for players. Same Canada, like not at all. Nobody wants to be here. They want they want to pay taxes, go through customs, whatever the case may be. And <laughs> we realize firsthand that you can have someone come here, win a championship. And they're still going to get out. Like they're not going to stay here. Um, so we, we trusted uh, Masai in that, that like, you know, he's going to drop the best person who's not just the best fit for the team, but for the country as well. And who wants to actually put play for us. Um, and just Scotty himself, like, I think his, his, uh, the way that he, he, his defense is something that's going to be very important for the Raptors. And we are a firstly defensive minded team. And um, no, even though, where you have to see what's going to happen with shooting for this season. Like at least if we're not shooting, you might not shoot either. <laughs> so yeah. we're going to have the defense going at that point. Like it's going to be um, on that level and pair Scotty, you know, with, uh, with the right people around him, especially not just uh, the players, but the coaching staff as well. I think Nick and his team has to have the juice to get the right um, stuff out of him as well as our development program, which is going to absolutely put Scotty in a position to succeed, not just for himself, but for the team as well. Um, so I think, yeah, like you mentioned, we're in a position where we're kind of not contending, but playoff bound somewhat and retooling on the inside, kind of not rebuilding, but retooling. And uh, um, it's it's just it's going to be a fun time to see what happens with us now, just because, you know, we've we've won the championship and that kind of. I don't care what anybody says that buys you five, six years. Okay. There's 30 teams, only one win. So that buys you a little bit of time. And because of that, I think uh, it's just going to be fun to see how he grows with the team and what they're able to get out of him to support the team. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I agree with that because uh, as someone who watched uh, 
you know, ACC uh, basketball a lot. I don't know. I mean, I follow Coach K just because I have all the utmost respect for Coach K from Duke and just seeing Scotty Barnes at Florida State. Um, I knew like, okay, wow, this kid's going to be a stud. And mm -hmm. when the Raptors took him at fourth, I'm like, okay, the Raptors, you know, went, on, went in on who they wanted the most. And Scotty Barnes uh, definitely stood out because as a Kings fan, you know, having a ninth pick, I thought if there's a chance where if Barnes were to drop, knowing that as his stock climbed and skyrocketed, I knew that he would not be available at nine. And I thought there was a good chance he would be available at nine, but that wasn't the case. So I mean, my point is that I would have loved to have Scotty Barnes available and the Kings draft him. But I think the Raptors did their homework and they were uh, yeah. the right pick and did a fantastic job of uh, drafting Scotty Barnes at four. So, and but I'm I'm pretty excited for uh, Davion Mitchell uh, with the Kings. I know there's a lot of confusion with the uh, you know the pick because we already have uh, De'Aaron Fox and uh, Tyler right. Burton. So, oh, why did the Kings draft another guard? But it's about culture because our defense was as a longtime content creator and a Sacramento Kings fan. Our defense was uh, probably the worst defense ever uh, when, <laughs> in the season last season. And I don't know if it's just, I don't know if it's Luke Walton. I don't know if it's just the players, but um, I think bringing a Davion Mitchell in now, who's known for his defensive culture, I think it's only going to help not hurt the Sacramento Kings mm -hmm. moving forward. And uh, just, I'm hoping that he changes the whole defensive culture on our team and rubs uh, the team the good way as on playing defense. So I'm excited for Davion Mitchell moving forward and seeing him in the Kings uniform. So uh, also wanted to mention, so DeMar DeRozan, is it, uh, was it uh, the case that he's going to have his uh, jersey retired in the Raptors this season or at some point? Um, I don't know if that's been discussed or maybe it has just or said DeMar past me. DeRozan, because I'm thinking about like, I thought I saw something online about they're going to honor DeRozan or Lowry's jerseys uh, in the rafters. But I wanted to ask, does Vince Carter, Mr. Half Man, Half Amazing, has his number been retired yet? I don't think so. I don't think we've retired anybody's yet. Okay. Unless we have, and I'm completely like, don't put <laughs> me on this, but I, I don't think we have. And I think, uh, I do remember seeing that where it was like, we were going to save the number. And I, I think that has to do with Lowry. I think it was going to be a uh, DeRozan would have been done for a little bit earlier. And for I think sure. Lowry is just like, you know, the guy for our franchise and having him leave, it's to solidify his spot yeah. with us. So I think that might, that might be it, but um, no, yeah, I don't think Vince Carter has been yet. And I think uh, as much as, you know, we, we love him and I, I, I think he's been great. There's <laughs> definitely a, some tension with, with Vince Carter and the, and the Raptors organization. So I can maybe see maybe that, that that's why they haven't, but uh, no I, news to me, I'll do my research afterwards. I promise. <laughs> uh, I was just curious. Cause like, I know, you know, DeRozan and Lowry, those two being for Toronto for so long uh, meant a lot to the organization and uh, mm -hmm. you know, when DeRozan left, it was kind of like, oh, okay, we lost DeRozan. And then um, I just thought about like, okay, you know, Vince Sanity and Vince Carter uh, put the Toronto Raptors um, pretty much on the map. And he was, you know, fun, exciting to watch with this half man, yeah. amazing dunking on everybody or dunk, just doing some crazy, amazing dunks in the game. So I was just curious because I thought like, I, heard, I thought I heard something about Lowry DeRozan, but then I was like, wait, what about Vince? Like Vince is an OG <laughs> here. Like why not Vince? Yeah. So, but yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, this upcoming season. Uh, I think it's uh, great to get it's great to have fans back in attendance. I plan on going to a game, and I'll definitely uh, keep an eye on the Toronto Raptors this season too. Looking forward to seeing what they do and how that roster looks. Um, I've always been a fan of Freddie Van Vliet. Um, he's definitely a good uh, two way or combo guard, and he played played big during the Golden State uh, during that finals against the Golden State Warriors. And I'm also keep an eye on Pascal Siakam. So the front <laughs> office is. Uh, Hey, we, you guys have a taker. If the front office decides to change their <laughs> mind and if they want to, you know, uh, put them up for sale or, you know, trade them, uh, give, give us a holler. Cause we'll be, <laughs> we'll be happy to take, uh, Pascal Siakam on our team. Um, uh, get, <laughs> get in line, get in line. All right. No, well, uh, you know what, Sacktown, uh, I'm going to uh, link Noor's, uh, Twitter description in the below. You can go ahead and check her out on her Twitter. Give her a follow, give her a like. Uh, show some love and support for Noor. Uh, Noor, that's pretty much it. I greatly appreciate you coming on and taking the time out of your weekend to come on. And uh, definitely was great talking basketball with you. Um, and yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, when the Toronto Raptors come into town and when the Kings go to Toronto to play. We'll definitely have to discuss basketball when our teams meet. And uh, that's the blood. <laughs> so I really do appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much again, Noor. And do you have anything else to say before you leave? 
No, that's it. You covered it all. Uh, we'll be in touch the second that my team plays your team and hope you guys are ready for the for the fire. Oh, we'll be ready. <laughs> I mean, I'm hoping Luke Perfect. Walton's ready. I'm hoping Luke Walton's ready because uh, yeah, he's there's no excuses. He's got to be ready because uh, I th- I really do feel like we have the talent to uh, definitely be a lot better than last season and the season before. Um, the players, the mindset from what I'm seeing, um, you know, locally here in Sacramento, from what I'm reading, uh, they're hungry. They want to, they definitely want to get it right this upcoming season. They want to uh, play a lot better, um, play with, play with consistency and possibly give this fan base uh, a crack at um, a playoff, a postseason spot. And mm-hmm. I'll tell you what, I know the Raptor fans, I've seen like the playoff games and hosting them, like all those fans crowd, big crowds outside the arena. I'm telling you what, we're we're dying for a playoff, <laughs> playoff to host a playoff game here in Sacramento. Uh, we got a brand, uh, you know, a Golden One Center is a nice state of the art arena here. It's been built here for a couple of years now, and man, we are just inching. We are dying for to host a playoff basketball game. I know how the fan base is loyal there in Toronto, but I'm telling you what, the Sacramento lo- fan loyal base is it's so loyal. And uh, despite all the negativity and all the losing seasons, this team. This uh, Sacramento fan base uh, definitely shows out when in the when there's a home game and they sell out as well. So, no, they owe it to you guys for sure, absolutely. And it's if anything, it's your time now, right? You got a young roster and it's only going to build to get better. And hopefully, once uh, um, Luke Walton taps into his warrior days, <laughs> you're able to manage these players a lot better and figure out how to maximize their potential. And yeah. for sure, I mean. I feel like the league now is kind of as open as um, actually never mind because I'm like <laughs> the Nets did acquire like half the NBA oh, just yesterday man. so never oh, mind. Oh my goodness! I mean, it's it's like <sighs> the Richard, Richard. The Nets got this person. I know person. Oh, the Lakers, Lakers. picking up DeAndre Jordan. So it's like, man, it's like the rich get richer. So it's like I, you know what? I feel bad for the Phoenix Suns just because they had a fantastic year in the Western Conference. And it took advantage of being the Lakers when they're kind of depleted and injury hit the injury bug and right. here the Clippers as well without Kawhi. But I think this upcoming season is going to be interesting. Um, if all teams are healthy, uh, the Nets too. I mean, and even Milwaukee having talked about Milwaukee because look at the finals run they had too. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. they paid their dues. They beat all the teams that they're supposed to beat. And then Giannis just went beast mode in game five and uh, they just destroyed the Phoenix Suns. So, yeah. um, but with that being said, Noor, I really do appreciate you. Uh, thanks again for coming on. Uh, take care. Have a great rest of your uh, day and uh, we shall catch up next time. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me. Take care. Have All a right. good one. Take care. Peace. Bye. Bye, Peter. Bye. All right, guys. So that was Noor from the Toronto Raptors coming on and uh, covering the Toronto Raptors, should I say, coming on, taking the time out of her day to come on and uh, really super appreciative Noor to come on and join the channel and talk basketball that's gonna do it for me for today's video guys thank you guys so much for tuning in you guys take care god bless keep pushing forward and i will catch you guys in my next video peace